Greetings viewers, welcome back to the Gar Doctor shop for another fun day wrenching. Today we got an 08 Ford Escape. Uh, it's in here with leaky valve cover gaskets, oil soaked coil over plug boots. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the valve cover gaskets, clean that up, replace the plugs and coil boots. I'm also going to do, be doing rear brake shoes. The right rear brake shoe is missing a big chunk of material. I found that on a safety inspection the other day. So we're going to do rear brake shoes and hardware. The drums look excellent. So uh, we're just going to clean those up and uh, button that back up. And also the lower control arms. Uh, lower ball joints and control arm bushings are shot on this thing. Um, that's typical at 80,000 plus miles on these rigs. So we're gonna replace the lower control arm assemblies with some CarQuest parts. I'm gonna do a lube oil filter while we're at it and uh, show you what parts we got here. So we've got some original equipment Motorcraft plugs. I've got the CarQuest coil boots for those. I've got the rear brake shoes and hardware. And we've got a valve cover gasket set. We've got two lower control arm assemblies from CarQuest. We've got an oil filter and some oil. So just briefly, uh, of course, uh, Car Doctor videos are for entertainment purposes and learning and education. So consult your manual and uh, be sure you're qualified to do uh, repairs, especially safety related stuff like front suspension and braking components. And uh, if it's uh, over your pay grade, then uh, farm it out to a fat, balding, 50 year old plus guy who will gladly take your money and do this for you. So let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this thing up and uh, pop some tires off and we'll do the brake and suspension work. And then we'll go gravitate up top uh, to do the valve cover and whatnot. All right, man. Thanks for joining me. This is going to be fun. So not only are the ball joints shot, but the lower control arm bushings are falling apart as well. So we're replacing the entire arm assembly. Okay, next we uh, removed the lower ball joint retaining bolt that goes through the steering knuckle. I did this by putting a 13 millimeter deep socket on the uh, bolt on the back side of the knuckle and then uh, I'm using a 15 millimeter wobbly impact on a half inch drive impact to remove the nut off the front side. Now we remove the front and rear inner control arm bolts that uh, fasten the inner portion of the control arm to the K-frame. The front bolt is a uh, 15 millimeter. And I'm just using a 15 millimeter impact wobbly on an impact with the short extension to access the bolt and remove it. For the rear bolt, I'm using a 21 millimeter socket to remove the rear bolt from the K-frame. Now pry the control arm 
out of the K-frame member. And drop the ball joint stud out of the steering knuckle. There you go. So we just reverse the procedure to install, and that's a pretty quick fix on the lower control arm. Then we'll proceed to the other side. Now we install the new lower control arm. Be sure to replace the ball joint retaining bolt and nut that's supplied with the control arm assembly. And finally, tighten your new lower ball joint bolt to 46 foot-pounds. Now torque the inner control arm bushing bolts to 80 foot-pounds torque. Okay, that about wraps up this side, and uh, basically the same thing on the other. I'll go ahead and whip that out, and then we'll move on to the rear brakes. This is fun. One more quick tip on rear brakes. Do them one side at a time. Uh, that way you can always go to the other side for a uh, reverse example of the side you're working on so that you can see uh, exactly where all the hardware goes when you're putting it back together. Okay, now we've moved to the right rear brake drum and we're gonna replace the brake shoes and uh, the brake hardware. So uh, the first order of business is to remove the drum. You wanna be careful doing that. You don't wanna damage the lug studs with your hammer, uh, but I like to use a hammer and beat on the face of the drum to get it removed so uh, just be careful you don't hit your hand uh, with the hammer but uh, you want to just hold it like that and ah, ah, oh, ah, ah, ah. First, I'm going to remove the uh, shoe retainer, uh, the hold down springs. We've got the smaller retainer tool end. Just push in and depress it and turn it to release the hold down spring. Okay, so uh, on the rear shoe, uh, we've got the parking brake cable attaching to the, to the parking brake lever, and I'm going to remove it uh, by gently taking a pair of dikes and uh, depressing the spring and releasing the shoe, the lever. This is the rear shoe, and there's the missing piece of material. You know, it was probably just caused by, uh, well, who knows, maybe someone just kind of uh, beating on the drum or uh, maybe dropping the shoe when they were installing it. Uh, but at any rate, I just felt like it was enough material missing 
uh, to call it a safety issue. Um, probably was breaking just fine, but eventually that whole shoe's gonna just fall off. So we don't know how much damage was done to the bonding material underneath it. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the shoes on both sides so we have even breaking, clean things up, replace the hardware. Um, and clean these uh, backing plates off and lubricate the areas where the shoe contacts it and put this thing back together. Clean it up with a little brake clean. Open up my brake hardware and get the hardware out for this side. You need the two hold down pins, insert them in the backing plate. and the springs. Replace the spring on the adjuster assembly. Match up your new spring and make sure it's identical. And put your adjuster back together. I'm going to retract the adjuster a little bit to accommodate the new shoes. By the way, this is the right rear we're working on. And this is the leading pad, or leading shoe. So I'm going to install this leading shoe onto the backing plate. Whoops. I'm going to lube the backing plate. Now I'm going to install the forward shoe. And uh, my replacement spring and retainer for the hold down. I'm going to install the parking brake cable to the parking brake lever on the rear shoe by again depressing the spring. This one I'm going to put a pair of pliers on the end of the spring and gently compress it so I can get my Certainly don't want to cut through the cable. Get it compressed enough to pop that baby on there. Oh my goodness.
install my hold down hardware. Kind of did this wrong. I should have put the adjuster in there first. But I can just pry the shoe back and get the adjuster popped in. Pop my adjuster spring on. And finally, the spring that retains the lower half of the shoes. Hey, by the way, you should always wear safety glasses when you're working with these springs. Uh, one can easily cut loose and just rip your eye right out of the socket. Uh, big shout out to Shane for hooking me up with some sweet cat glasses. Uh, NC Machinery uh, definitely uses, uh, requires glasses in their workspace environment uh, for safety reasons and I should wear them more often. I'm probably lucky to have two eyeballs left after all my years of wrenching. Um, anyway, wear some safety protection before you stretch them springs out or uh, sooner or later you might get, get hooked up in your eye. Holy oh, smokes. Okay. Go ahead and double check that all your springs are properly installed, your hold downs are good, your shoes are centered on the backing plate, and uh, clean up your drum and reinstall it. The hardware kit came with uh, another adjuster plug. The adjuster is on the back side of the backing plate. And uh, just pop that out. So we'll leave that out and then I'll adjust the uh, brake shoes for a good fit on the drum. Uh, you want to be able to rotate the drum or the wheel with it installed. Um, but uh, you do want a little bit of friction there. Uh, make sure that you got your shoes fully seated against the uh, drum surface. And then uh, we'll just get the wheels back on this. Retorque them to spec, which I believe is 100 foot pounds. Okay, I've adjusted up the shoes and I'm going to replace the uh, adjustment plug on the back side that came with the hardware kit. And we're good to go. I'm just gonna do the other side, uh, similar procedure, and then we're gonna do an oil change on this. All right, hang in there. Okay, we're gonna move on to a lube oil filter. Basically, I define a lube oil filter at my shop as being a, 
uh, engine oil and filter change, and then uh, checking vital fluids and lubing the chassis as necessary. Uh, this vehicle does not have any grease certs on it, doesn't have any on the tie rod ends, uh, or even the new ball joints didn't come with them. Um, but it is a four-wheel drive vehicle, so it's going to include checking the rear differential, transfer case, the uh, final drive and transmission fluid, along with uh, the coolant and power steering fluid, brake fluid and whatnot. Um, but anyway, I'm going to start by placing my oil drain under the engine and uh, removing the engine oil drain plug. This is a 2.3 motor. It's a dual overhead cam inline four-cylinder engine. They do come with uh, V6s in these uh, vehicles, the three liters. Uh, they're similar, uh, but in this case, um, we take uh, four and a half quarts of 520 oil. And uh, I'm using a Napa part number 21348 filter. And uh, also be checking the air filter. We, we'd usually check the belts and whatnot. Oil changes don't pay a lot. I do it as a customer service. My shop does not sell oil uh, changes and then try to heap on a bunch of selling additional services like tranny flushes and power steering flushes and a bunch of unnecessary crap. I do keep customers uh, tuned in as to the normal maintenance schedule requirements for their vehicles. However, I, d I don't push the stuff. If they don't want to do it, that's fine. I don't come out after every oil change with a, a little card with little drops of different fluids on it and tell them how horrible it is. Uh, it's just not the way I do business. Um, and uh, I, I see a lot of those people taking advantage of people because uh, they just don't know any better. And they usually just say, yeah, 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 do the gold treatment, the fuel additive, all the BS. And that's how these guys are making additional money. But they should stick to just changing oil properly and putting the drain plug back in right and screwing the filter on properly and not double gasketing it. Uh, so that the cars are leaving and it's actually done right and the engine doesn't blow up. So this customer asked for an oil change. That's what they're going to get. They're not going to get a whole lot more. Originally, this vehicle did come in for uh, an inspection after they purchased the vehicle. I wish they had come here before. I did identify some uh, problems with the uh, front end. Uh, there had been some collision damage and substandard repairs done to the front end. There's parts of the front end that are shoved back in and chicken scratch welding, uh, holding the core supports up and whatnot. It's, it's super sketchy. And uh, of course, now there's not a lot they can do about it. I did send them over to a body and frame shop and they said, yeah, it was, it was a little sketchy looking, but it was safe. So uh, I just went ahead with the front end and brake work. Uh, to make sure that he's uh, safe going down the road, put his daughter in this rig. So uh, we're going to go forward with the oil change, the 13 millimeter on the drain plug. Position my oil drain. I have a, a rolling oil drain container, um, and it's a unit that I can pressurize with shop air to uh, pump the oil out of this and into my uh, 55 gallon drums that I hold the oil and uh, I bring it over to my buddy who has a waste oil furnace. I don't have one. If I get my own shop, I plan on investing in one of those to save me money in the Alaska winter months by burning my waste oil. But at this point, I bring it over to my buddy. And you use a small filter wrench to remove the oil filter.
Okay, I'm going to apply a small amount of uh, oil to the uh, new filter uh, O-ring seal. And I'm going to look up and make sure that the uh, mounting surface on the engine block is free of debris. But in this place, it had the, uh, the, old, drink, uh, the old filter uh, O-ring was stuck up there. So that would have not been good had we just screwed the filter on. So it's clear and free now. We're going to go ahead and screw on the filter. Tighten it properly. So I've checked the rear differential fluid level along with the front final drive fluid level and uh, did a quick check of the suspension assemblies, the shocks, suspension components, and uh, brake lines, and uh, other brake components that I, that I didn't initially check. And uh, now it's time to lower it down. I'm gonna uh, hit the, do the final torque on the wheel lug nuts and uh, top off my oil and check the fluids up top and then we'll go ahead and complete the valve cover gasket and spark plug installation. All right, now we're gonna address the valve cover gasket issue. This vehicle has a valve cover gasket leak that is uh, damaging the spark plug coil over boots. Um, we're gonna replace the coil boots plugs along with the valve cover gaskets, clean up the oil and get that rectified. So uh, what we're gonna do is remove the four electrical connectors from the individual ignition coils we're going to also remove the PCV vent side tube from the back of the valve cover. We're going to remove the electrical connector for the camshaft position sensor and the cylinder head temperature sensor. And then we're going to uh, move the wiring harness uh, out of the way to facilitate removal of the valve cover bolts. Okay, now we need to remove the four bolts retaining the ignition coils and pull the coils off before we pull, pull the valve cover. See how saturated with oil the spark plugs are. The tube seals around the valve cover are allowing oil to penetrate down into the spark plug wells and destroy the 
silicone rubber boot that insulates the ignition coil. Looks like I need to remove this bracket for the accelerator cable uh, so I can get the accelerator cable out of the way as it interferes with the valve cover removal. Remove uh, some of the harness retainer clips from the studs on the valve cover bolts. And I also need to remove this rear accelerator bracket, uh, accelerator cable bracket support that bolts over top of the rear of the valve cover. So the spark plug tube seals are just completely full of oil. The spark plugs and coil boots are completely immersed in oil. And that's not what you want. So these seals around the top of each spark plug well are not sealing properly and allowing oil to get in. And that's not a good thing. So we're going to clean up our ceiling surfaces. I'm going to pull the spark plugs and clean out the spark plug tube areas and replace the spark plugs. Okay, I'm actually gonna uh, replace the valve cover first, and then I'm gonna clean out the spark plug tubes. Since I'm gonna leave the spark plugs out, I'm gonna spray a little bit of brake clean down there and just crank the engine over and blow all that crap out of there, uh, just to clean the spark plug tubes. Since oil has gone down in the cylinders and I don't wanna create a hydrostatic lockup issue when I crank it over if I were to put the plugs in now. Um, and also, uh, I don't want to get any brake clean down inside the crankcase uh, and contaminate the oil uh, if I try cleaning out the tube seals now. So I'm going to uh, finish cleaning my gasket sealing surfaces. I'm going to put two thin beads of RTV uh, along the case halves on the timing cover to cylinder head face uh, at the mating surface of the valve cover and then reinstall and torque uh, the valve cover bolts properly.
Now we tighten the valve cover bolts according to the recommended tightening procedure and specified torque. Now I'm going to clean out the spark plug tube seals. I'm also going to clean off uh, some of the electrical connectors like the cylinder head temp sensor, uh, boot and connector, and the other wiring that's been affected by the oil. And then I'm going to place a shop rag over the uh, cylinder head and crank the motor over and blow any of the oil and cleaner out of the cylinders before I put the spark plugs back in. I've cleaned my ignition coils of any oil contamination, and now I'm going to install the coil over boot by first putting the spring, which is the connector for the ignition coil to spark plug, and I usually twist it in a clockwise motion to make sure it's fully seated into the coil, and then insert the coil over boot fully onto the coil itself. Now apply a small amount of dielectric grease to the inside of the coil boot at the spark plug connection and install the coil into the vehicle. Do the same with the remaining three cylinders. Okay, well, I'm about ready to wrap this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of the fluids. I'm going to check the air filter. Um, and I'm going to put an oil change sticker. I usually date it for three months and 3,000 miles from this date forward. And uh, that'll give them a uh, reference point for changing the oil next time. Okay, now I'm going to start this thing up. It's probably going to blow out a big smoke cloud. And then I'm going to move it over to the alignment bay and get the alignment done on it. Now I'm going to perform a four-wheel alignment on our John Bean alignment system. It's a two-camera target type alignment system. Works pretty sweet. First I'm going to mount the targets on the four wheels. Then I'm going to perform a rollback measurement after I've positioned my cameras properly. And then I'm going to do a caster camber sweep uh, to get all my angles. And then we'll see what kind of adjustments need to be made. Okay, looks like we just need to do a toe setting and uh, get this thing lined up here.
All right, that pretty much wraps this one up. Pretty straightforward deal. Uh, a lot of similar issues with most Ford Escapes, Mazda Tributes on the 2.3. You'll experience these oil leaks on the valve covers once you get past 80, 90,000 miles. That uh, gasket on this one was really hard uh, when I removed it as I was cleaning the valve cover. And uh, so uh, get that taken care of before that leakage causes a uh, misfire problem and then compounds uh, problems down the road for you. And uh, that'll be a good thing to do. Definitely the lower control arms on V6s and four cylinders are common issues. Uh, anywhere over 80, 90,000 miles. Take a close look at that and keep it safe. And hopefully this video was helpful. I appreciate you watching. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time here at the Car Doctor channel. All right, good luck with your repairs. Have a good one.